In the Gospel of Matthew in the 18th chapter, Jesus elevates the significance of the care and the teaching of children in the eyes of the kingdom of God. He says these words beginning at 18.1, At that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. I think it's good and right that children receive such priority, and our children are definitely in our thoughts and our prayers as they enter back into a new school season. But today I want to say a word not just about the children, I want to say a word about the teachers that are being impacted by all of these changes. You know, I'm I'm married to a teacher. Julie's been teaching for more than 20 years, and I've learned some of the highs and lows that teachers go through in education. And I want to just say a word of appreciation to all of our teachers in public and private schools, the teachers who work on our campus here. It's become more evident than ever that our school calendar sets the pattern of life for most of our societies. And now we're even coming to the sudden realization that our very economy depends upon our ability to educate our children and send them to school on a regular basis. This has put a lot of pressure on our teachers during this COVID pandemic. They have to be at school and teach remotely whether they think it is safe or not. That's just the life of a teacher. I know for Julie, every time a school board or an administration makes a decision or assigns a task that is truly impossible for a teacher to accomplish, the response almost every time when a teacher pushes back is, no excuses, get it done. Now, I know our school boards are doing everything they can, and our administrators as well, to keep teachers and students safe. But the truth is, nobody really knows what the best practices are. And our teachers have to teach anyway. They have so much pressure on them now, teaching in the classroom, teaching online, and not just doing that, they're now responsible for the cleanliness of their classes and have to make sure their class is cleaned up and wiped down between periods. Plus, they have to maintain the usual order in a classroom, deal with a population of more anxious and worried students than, than, than ever before, and on top of that, keep the students in a place where they will continue to maintain social distancing. We're asking a lot of our teachers So when you hear teachers express their worries about teaching this year or their frustrations about the pressures that are put on them, I think they deserve our understanding. A teacher who's worried about going back on campus has a legitimate concern. They're not making a political statement. They're not expressing a a poor work ethic or anything like that. The teachers know and we know that the success or failure of this school year will fall entirely upon them. I personally want to say to all of our teachers that I appreciate you, and to the extent that I can, I understand the pressures that you're under. Please know that Christ Church will continue to hold you in our prayers, will continue to support you in any way that we can, and we are profoundly grateful for all that you are undertaking in this very challenging school environment. This Sunday, uh, we're continuing with our uh, schedule of live in-person worship at 8.30 with traditional and 11 o'clock blended. We're continuing with live stream worship at 11 o'clock as well. I look forward to being in worship with everybody online and on campus this Sunday.